Hi guys, I've just got back from the MD Codes training in London. It was a big three-day event and I promised lots of people that I would do a summary of it so that you know what's happened and hopefully you can pick up a few things. Um, so this is my summary of London uh, 2018 MD Codes training. So um, before we go into it, there's a, firstly you obviously need to understand if you've not come across MD codes what exactly the purpose of them are and they're actually aiming to solve a couple of important problems for us uh, as, uh, as doctors and clinicians in medical aesthetics um, but also allow patients to get much better results. So the first thing is that you can consider them sort of like an algorithm for decision making um, and I love a good algorithm so it's this approach of analyzing faces, choosing injection points, making decisions about volume, um, position, safety, and product choice uh, in a really systematic way that will get much more repeatable results. So every part of the face is obviously connected to other parts of the face in terms of the aesthetic results, and we're, we're trying to do it in a more holistic way, which is gonna give people much more natural results. It's a little bit more difficult, um, than just injecting on intuition, but it's also worth doing because it's going to differentiate you from other people in the market and the best injectors are going to be very clearly uh, spotable when you have a look at the results that they manage to create. So that's obviously a great thing for patients as well is if we can drive standards up and get nicer results. So um, that's basically what codes are and the purpose of them. The, but one of the big limitations that clinicians have is that basically most of our patients can't afford our best work. So what the codes are hoping to do is to enable clinicians to create a, a map that will get patients to the, ultimately the result that they really want um, instead of stopping much too soon. And in fact, if you consider the kind of far end of the spectrum, that people might have a, a cheek treatment, for example, and, and then think, well, that's what I do. I'll have my cheeks treated every six to 12 months, and they kind of repeat that. And over a long period of time, they may spend quite a lot of money, but they, they're not getting anything better. In fact, they can deharmonize their face and look a little bit worse. So I think it's a great idea that we start to build a, a treatment plan for patients that ultimately gets them really beautiful, natural looking results, which is what they really want. Most people really want that. Um, and now this, is, this system, if you understand it and you implement it, will allow you to do that. So um, I think it's going to be great for patients as well, but also it makes your job as a clinician much more interesting because it's, it's basically harder, but also more rewarding in terms of what you actually get in the end. So um, those are probably the two biggest things. Um, another key concept that came out of it, which is that actually piecing together all these treatments in, a, in the systematic way is going to be able to, going to enable clinicians to produce surgical-like results. So it really is comparable with surgery in terms of what you can achieve. And this is, this is something I think um, will take a while to sink in um, because we, I think unconsciously a lot of us consider ourselves almost the, the poor surgeons of, uh, the poor uh, cousins of surgery and that we can only do so much. But actually, if you pull all of the skill set that we have, well, at least injectors who are trained to cover the whole face, if you manage to have a map to actually execute on all of your skills, you're going to create really amazing results that, that actually do look like you've had surgery. Um, so it's going to be a, a very interesting time to be doing medical aesthetics. And if you can get your patients on this journey from uh, one syringe every so often, but to actually have higher volumes less often because we're using longer lasting products, um, but to then actually get amazing results. I think it's going to be really rewarding um, to work in this field. So can you shift your mindset away from being uh, uh, just because you can't afford surgery, you have dermal fillers. It's going to be much more about, I can create amazing results for you. Um, but if, they'll, if patients will accept that concept, you'll get to do it and you'll actually prove it to them. So I'm excited by that. Um, I think that's, that's an, a really important shift in the industry. And of course, if you think about what patients want, they don't want to go through all the pain and the risk of surgery. If you can get them the same result and it might last for years, which is what I'm seeing with Vicross, um, why would they not do it? And I think we've got to get that message out, which, will, which is a big part of the MD codes. Um, okay, what else was there? There was, um, I, I think uh, the big shift as well 
in, in other ways is the total volume people are using. So um, we got to this number of around 12 syringes on average to do really complete treatments. And I know many of you watching have never got close to doing 12 syringes. Um, and that's basically because it's very expensive and you've got to have a very clear plan. It's much easier to plan a cheek treatment or, an, or a lip treatment. But if you're actually planning a whole face, well, once again, that's exactly what the codes are designed to get around is that you can um, systematically design treatments for the whole face and then do them in, in stages so that people over a course of time get a great result. So higher volumes are um, a lot more on the cards than certainly a lot of the training I've heard I've had in years gone past where people were talking about four syringes doing a whole face. Um, I think I always doubted that. In fact, many of my best cases were way more than four syringes. And now I don't feel guilty about that anymore because I know I was doing the right thing. Uh, and that's just what it takes if you want to do big restorations on people. So higher volumes are on the cards for the future. Um, the final day was a, was a lot on the dynamic changes in the face when you when you treat. So if you add volume to the face, how do you affect the muscles? And it turns out in a really good way. It tends to restore harmony in the face in a way that I think many of us have noticed over time. But it's actually it's very holistic. It happens all over the face, and it happens um, in areas that you wouldn't think were necessarily that close to the structures that are affected. So you can, for example, inject a cheek and see changes in the crow's feet. Um, you can inject temples and see changes in muscle activity in the frontalis. And it always, almost always seems to be beneficial. So all of the cases we saw, we, we were decreasing um, overactivity in, in the muscles that were elevating the lip or decreasing activity in the, in the corrugator muscle, in the frontalis, you were increasing activity and causing eyebrow lifts. Um, and I've got, I thought I'd show you one of my cases, uh, which I actually submitted to Maurizio as part of the, uh, part of my mentorship program. So um, I'm going to be one of the doctors uh, in the future, I think, who helps train other clinicians to deliver on these codes. Um, and I noticed that uh, after the conference, I went back and had a look at my before and afters. And I can, I can show you how these, this effect actually works in, in patients. So if you have a look at this case and have a look um, in particular, she'll pop up in a second. There we go. If you look at the eyebrows here, compared with that side, there's no botulinum toxin involved at all. But by replacing volume in the temples, you can see that she's actually got a nice eyebrow lift in the after picture. Um, we also have a tiny amount, and I really didn't do much at all in the nasolabial fold, um, but it's just reduced the elevation of the top lip, as you can see. Um, and there are a few other changes you can see. There are a few softer lines around the cheeks, um, the, the eyes, the tear trough, all of those muscles are just slightly dampened down in a good way, in a, in a more youthful way. Uh, and the overall result is a really natural looking result. Um, but that also uh, is incredibly what, ex exactly what patients want. And I think that's an exciting trend in the industry because obviously the extreme cases, the big transformations, the false look as well gets a lot of attention. But I'm, I've always been convinced that the bulk of the market are, ju are people who want to restore and maintain themselves. And the MD codes are going to give you a route to give ordinary people fantastic results. So it's a, it's a great step forward. Um, and obviously, you'll be hearing lots more about this from me in the future because I'll be talking about it more and more. Um, but I hope that helps you with some of the main concepts. Thanks.